Not long ago, I reviewed an alcohol stove made in Germany, the X-Boil. Super simple, super safe, great little alcohol stove. Well, now I have another product from the company X-Boil, and this one is known as the X-Fire. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this quite amazing wood stove, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Leo at X-Fire and X-Boil for sending me this stove out so that I could share it with you. Like the X-Boil, these are made at Leo's home in Bavaria, Germany, all handmade. Very simple, so well designed, quite amazing to say the least. So what I thought I would do is just focus in on the stove, give you some specifications as I assemble it, and then of course we'll get a fire built in it. All right, let's get started. So this is the case that the X-Fire arrived in. Just a simple envelope, kind of a Kadura type nylon zipper on top. It's actually much bigger than it needs to be to carry the stove itself, but there's a reason for that because, well, let's dig in and I'll start showing the things. The reason the envelope is as big as it is because one of the things that Leo sends along is this grill that you can use on top of it and of course because of the handle it's going to extend the length and uh, I was just using it just a few minutes ago for cooking my lunch on grilling up some spam worked really well for that uh, but you know you don't always want to take this with you and if you don't feel you need to you could leave it home and you could probably fold the material over let's actually see if I could yeah, see, you can make this case a whole lot smaller in your pack if you wanted to. All right, I'm going to bring all the components out and lay them down beside me. And just show you what else is in here, which is really just the instructions for putting this together. But once you do this, or once you see it's done, it's, it's so simple, right? So that's the instructions that we put that and the case aside. So when you get this for the first time, and this is far from the first time, as you can see from its usage. There are three plates that are flat, and uh, they'll only remain flat until you put, build a fire in it. After that, they do take a curvature, which is exactly what you want. And that curvature would be a bit of a hassle putting back in that envelope if it wasn't for this. These two pins are also supplied by Leo to go with the set, and they have multiple uses. One is what you see right now. They're, I'm using them to flatten the stove out so that it uh, will go into the uh, package but they're used for other things as i'll come along so what i need to do is pull the pins out and lay them aside all right so as i said there are three plates you can see now the curve that they have taken with the heat from multiple fires actually the first fire is all it needs to do it this is where things are going to start to look familiar and just hold up one of the plates look at the tabs the three tabs on there and on the other end, the keyhole kind of slots, just like on the uh, X-Boil. And that's exactly where this design came from. It's kind of like an X-Boil put on a much larger scale. All right, I'm just trying to get the three of these apart. I am going to get good and dirty doing this, of course. All right, I'm going to pick them up one at a time in order to put it together. So to put it together, really, really easy. Take the, a slot with the tabs, come in from the, the outside, put it through pull it together and you've got part of the curve now all I need to do is put the next one on same thing come in from there pull it together now I've got it all assembled but for the last step which is to fold it down put them through and that's it all right so there is the body of the stove fully assembled now what's missing is the uh, plate so this is the fire plate. There is no grate per se. It's not like you normally see in a lot of stoves where it's a grate full of holes. This is a solid steel plate. But as you'll see, that's not a problem. Actually, it has some real benefits for building a fire on top of this as opposed to one with holes in the bottom. But before I insert it inside, I'm hoping that I can pick this up. Three tabs that are bent out. Let's start with the outside. You can see the square. When the square was cut, they bent the tabs inwards, and they did that at down here, and then again halfway up. Those tabs are what support the plate. So you want to, if you're burning with wood, that's where the plate goes. It drops down into and on top of those tabs like that. There, now the stove is fully assembled and ready to go. The only thing left to do would be to build a fire inside of it and then put the cross members on. Now the cross members are skeletonized, 
for lightweight. They have quite a bit of height, as you can see, about an inch and a half. I'll be giving you the dimensions in a moment. But one of the things I like about these ones is, do you see the notches here, how big they are? There's no messing around trying to get these on top of the stove. You could almost drop it from a height and they would still land perfectly because they match up with all those little crenellations along the top. So let's see if I can just do that while I'm holding it. Maybe I'll do it on my knee. They just drop right on, right? And they, that's it, that's it. So now it is fully operational and ready to go. So what I'll do is give you some dimensions on this. I'm gonna talk about its alternative use with charcoal and alcohol stoves. Then we'll get a fire built in it. All right, let's uh, give you some dimensions and things like that to go with this. So the weight, this, now the weight I'm giving you now is not just the stove, but it's the envelope and everything in it. 255 grams. I'll be putting the Imperial in the video description below for your reference. The height of this one is 19 centimeters from the bottom to the top. The diameter is 19 centimeters across. This is the largest of the stoves that Leo has to offer. He does offer a 14 centimeter size as well and a 14 centimeter ultralight, not titanium. I don't believe it's titanium. I'll, if it is, I'll correct myself. So there's a 14 centimeter titanium, a 14 centimeter stainless steel and a 19 centimeter stainless steel. And I have the 19 centimeter one. Okay. So fuels other than wood. What if I want to burn something like uh, charcoal in this? Well, you certainly can. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can see I have the plate sitting all the way to the bottom. So if I wanted to use it down there, that's fine. But that's a lot of charcoal. And boy, as you know, charcoal can generate a lot of heat. So what I can do is bring that plate up closer to the top of the stove because there is another set of pins right there. And now the plate is much nearer to the top. So I can get a small amount of charcoal in there, just enough for some grilling with and it will work fine. And I mentioned airflow. Airflow is all important to wood fires as well as it is for charcoal. If, well, as you can see, let's just take a look at the design of the stove. Now up near the top, those are ventilation, but they're not even really necessary because the pot stands stand so high off of the stove, as you'll see when we get it going. But you can see at the bottom, the airflow all the way around, certainly at the very bottom, and but more importantly, it's this double set of rows right here where the airflow occurs. They are just above where the plate would operate if you were using it at the bottom set of notches. And regardless of how much ash or buildup you get inside of this, the air continues to be drawn in through the sides and up through the fuel inside of it. So having the plate solid is not in any way hampering the burning of this stove. In fact, it has some really unique benefits. Stoves like this can burn really hot. I mean, very, very hot. If the airflow had this been an open grate fire grate, it would get really, really hot and maybe too hot. Maybe too hot for cooking, go through fuel faster. So what I've observed with this, because of the solid plate, is once the fire gets going, and as you'll see in a minute, it can really get going in the stove. But as it dies down, it holds on to its coals for an extended period of time. That does two things. Give you something better for grilling over, keeps a nice even heat going for a longer period of time. And because those coals remain, if you want to throw a few more sticks in to, to uh, get the fire going again, then there's still those hot coals there to ignite them. So yeah, that works out really well. Now I did mention you can use this with alcohol. So a couple of things here. This is the height at which you would use it. So place your alcohol stove, your solid fuel tab, or your alcohol gel holders on top of this plate, and then decide where you want the pins. That's where these pins come in. It's not just for holding it together, but you can use it, put the pins right across the top in those notches, like this, above your alcohol stove, or if that's a little bit too high, through the larger holes inside and Let's see if I can do this without dropping them. All right, so now you can see the basic concept. I don't think I have it in exactly the right holes. Well, maybe I can do that, put it in the right hole. Oh, that's better. So that's actually a good height for using the X boil off of it. It's a little bit too shallow for a Trangia stove, but it's perfect right there for the X boil. Now, if I want to use the Trangia, that's when I'd put them across the top like that. Okay, I think that's enough discussion on this stove. Let's get a fire built in it. All right, just before I get the fire going in the X fire, I just wanted to show you a few things. I've cleared some duff off of the top of the soil. The soil is quite wet, so I'm okay with that. But uh, I'm laying down a 
fiberglass mat that I like to use for wood stoves, especially a wood stove like this, and I'll explain what I mean in a minute. Now, I could further extend the safety of that by using, this is a piece of aluminum flashing that I sometimes use to lay down, depending if I feel that there's going to be a lot of hot coals falling through. No hot coals falling through, but just the same, that plate can really transfer down a lot of heat onto the ground, and that's the reason why I'm using the fiberglass mat to uh, keep the heat from transferring through. If you don't have something like this, again, clear the forest floor offs just to loosen the, or lessen the risk as much as possible, but you can also use the pot stands. So these pot stands, if you invert them so the notches are there, you could lay that down and set the stove right on top of it. Now, you're far enough off of the, off of the ground or any flammable materials, lots of airflow underneath. You've got close to three inches between the plate, which is right here, all the way down to the ground. Of course, now you don't have the top bars that you would, or the crossbars that you would have on top. I want to use the crossbars today, so that's why I'm going to use this directly on the mat. Now, getting the fire going in this, nothing special. I'm not going to go through a whole lot of work. I'm going to throw in a bunch of birch bark, split some of this stuff down. This is literally right off of the forest floor here. Is that birch bark? Huh? We'll throw it in. See, big piece of birch bark off of the forest floor here. Much more than I need. I'm just going to save one little piece for a lighter strip. Yeah. All right, that's enough. That's actually, you know what, I'm not even going to put all of that in. I'm going to leave some bit because I don't think I'm going to need it, and birch bark will burn high. A little sticks, again, right off of the forest floor. The whole point of a stove like this is to do the minimal amount of processing. It's an ultralight stove, a big one, mind you, but you should be able to just pick sticks up, provided that they are dry. And these are. These are dry enough, so that's okay. Let's get this little piece of birch bark lit. There are times when birch bark off of the forest floor is not as easy to light. That's a bit better. No, it's not. Come on, you can light. If I had taken a moment to shred this up a little bit, it would have lit a little bit faster. There we go. That's going to burn now. So as that goes down and moves into the birch bark inside, I think I'm going to reposition some of it so it does all catch there. That's better. Take my stack of sticks, drop them in. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to just drop these in, hoping that I didn't put my fire out. No, still burning. Good. Give those a second to catch, and I have some larger pieces here just out of reach, so I'm going to have to move around the camera to get those, and by the time I get back, that'll be quite engaged. Like I said, all I had to do is just reach around, but it would be in front of the camera, so now I have some thicker sticks off of the forest floor. This is a rather big stove. You may not want to have one as big as this, but you know, if you have it big, sometimes it's better to have a stove a little bit too big than a little bit too small. You're not saving a lot of weight by going to the smaller stove. And this allows you to use much larger pots than I'm going to be using today. What I'm using today is only 13 centimeters. With my testing, I was using a 16 centimeter pot, but I did not bring that with me today. So I'm going to be using a 13 centimeter pot, and you'll see just how small it looks on top of this stove. Now I do have a windscreen, as you can see, that's starting to really light up in a hurry. So why don't I get the windscreen and put it around the outside. Of course, when I come back with my windscreen, the breeze has died down, but I do have my windscreen here. I'll just hold it aside. I don't think I'm going to need it for a minute or two. And uh, what I'm going to do is put the pot stand on. For that, I will wear gloves. All right, so this is why I like this pot stand so much. It just almost falls into place. It's set on. I don't have to worry about trying to match it into notches. That's an intense fire, right? I'm going to have to back the camera up a little bit. I'm three feet away, but I can really feel the heat here. All right, some of that initial intensity is dying off as was expected. Now I can take some larger pieces of, what is this? I think it's birch. Pretty punky though. But the stove is not fussy about what fuel you give it. 
and you can give it some good sized pieces as long as they don't interfere with whatever pot or pan that you're putting on. That's a piece of pine. All right, I think that's everything I need for right now. Now I'm gonna put on my pot for water for coffee. So this is my 13 centimeter Tom Shoe titanium pot and you can see just how small it looks on top of this wood stove. It is full of water, well, not completely full. It's an 1100 milliliter pot. I probably have 800 milliliters or so in there. It won't bring, be long before it bring, comes to a boil. And uh, I'm gonna make some coffee and we'll wrap this video up. All right, my water is hot and I'm gonna be making, actually it's not gonna be coffee today. It's gonna be cocoa, hot cocoa. I just, something different. It's getting into the fall season and I just had this Desire to have something different than coffee for a change, so. It's actually a cocoa recipe that I have come up with for people on the ketogenic diet, like myself. I'll share it at some point. It's not the uh, focus of this video. All right, that looks good. Now that's hot. But while I've got this opportunity, there is something else I wanted to share with you. Remember those pins that I showed you? The ones that hold it together in a flat shape while it's in its storage envelope. Also can be used for setting a pot on top of over an alcohol stove. Well, here's another thing that you can use them for. So for instance, right now the fire is going low. Uh, I gotta let it go out before I can do much else with the stove. But if for some reason I had to move the stove out of here, for, I don't know, whatever reason, maybe the wind's changed or I'm finding that uh, it's too close to something, I can take the hooks, you can see the hooks on the bottom, I can take the hooks, do gloves, this with gloves, mind you, and lift the stove and then move it. And it's very light and it holds together nicely and I can move the stove safely with my hands well out of the way. I'd still recommend gloves, of course, for doing that. All right, I'm gonna let this fire burn out. In the meantime, I'm gonna enjoy my cocoa once this cools down enough for me to handle, then we'll close this video out. All right, my stove has cooled off. I'm going to reverse the process and taking it apart so that I can show you how it goes into storage function. Uh, a couple of things, this is dirty, really <laughs> dirty right now, not surprisingly. So let me take the cross stands off, set those aside. I think I'll put them right on the ground. So the first thing I wanted to show you was the bottom plate, and I'm showing you that for a reason, so I'll just reach in and grab it. Okay, so this is the thing that took the longest to cool off because it is heavyweight stainless steel. Yeah, I'm getting good and dirty now. Um, I wanted to show you the warping. Yes, there is a little bit of warping, a little bit. Can you see that? And that's intentionally, I left it this side up for a, a variety of burns just to see what would happen. Now, what I'll do the next time is flip it upside down. So that'll be where the fire rests on top of the plate and it should go back into true regardless it's not going to affect the performance of the stove. It doesn't do anything for the assembly. So in answer to the question somebody will ask, how quickly does it cool down? The rest of the stove cools down really fast. It's just very lightweight spring steel. This, however, does take a little bit of time to cool off. All right, let me just put that aside for a moment. So to disassemble the stove, it is just the opposite of assembly. I bend it in, show you what I'm doing, so that I can take the tabs out, and that'll occur three times. All right, putting them around. So now that I have each of these pieces, you can see not only the tabs, right behind the tabs are those little projections, the little shelves that the plate rested on while it was inside. So you just stack those one on top of the other. And there are the three plates all stacked together. Now, here's where the pins come back into play, the two stainless steel pins. I'm gonna try and do this without getting absolutely filthy. I can wash my hands, the clothes is, I just didn't wanna get all that dirty. All right, so I can see the sun is coming in behind me making it a little hard to see. So there's the pin. I'm gonna take it and project it through, actually from the other side, towards the keyhole. Now let's see if I can make sure you can see this. I'm pushing it towards the keyhole and through like that. Can you see what I've done? Pushed it through the keyhole. Which ones you use, which holes do not make any difference. I like going towards the keyhole because the slot is longer and gives me more room for error and sliding it through. And there we go. Now we're ready to put it back in its envelope. So I'll shove that back into the envelope. But what I'm going to do is take the plate and put it right on top because there's a whole lot of 
soot on the inside of that and there's no need to get that on the inside of the envelope unnecessarily. Grill can go inside and my two pot stands can go inside. I just dropped one of them somewhere. There it is. My two pot stands can go inside and I'm good to go. That's all there is to it. Let me just drop that to the ground so we can wrap the video up. So this is really a well worked out ingenious design. Leo came up with something. Now I know it starts off with the basis for his X-Boil and he just sized it up but airflow in a stove like this is what's all important. Too much airflow and you go through your fuel too quickly and you're left with no coals. Too little airflow you get a lot of smoke and unburnt ash and soot and everything else in your stove. So to get the balance right is uh, quite a bit of engineering. Uh, Leo chose to go with the solid fuel plate on the bottom rather than an open grate like other stoves do. The choice in this case I think is ideal because the airflow comes in all around the sides and is continuous regardless of how much ash is built up on that bottom plate and as I mentioned that bottom plate and the fact that it's thick stainless, stainless steel helps to hold the heat protects the ground below without the need for an ash plate so it's kind of fire grate ash plate both at the same time and uh, yeah it makes great grilling coals after the fact. You saw how quickly it lit up and how high the flames get but once it died down the heat inside that stove stayed for a good long while. So the only precautions I would ask of you or suggest to you is to make sure what your surface is underneath the stove. I put my actually let me just reach over and grab it. So this is that fiberglass mat. Now the discoloration in no way hampers the juice but that round burn on it or scorch mark on it is from that stove. So that gives you an idea just how much heat actually transfers down through the bottom of the stove. So it's important to have it on a fire safe surface. You can as I mentioned use the cross stands to lift the stove up a little bit, get a little extra height, make it a little bit safer. Uh, that's the only caution I would say in using it is make sure that you're on a fire safe surface below. All right. This is a nice stove. I'll probably use this more often and the light weight of it and the size of it make it a, not a bad winter stove. Now yes I haven't used it all winter long but the dynamic should be that with the airflow and the size and the amount of fuel I get in this it's probably going to work really well in cold weather. In fact I'll continue to play with it in cold weather and if it's any different than what I'm telling you now then of course I'll report that back. Okay that's everything. What I'll do now is give you links to Leo's website where you can take another look at the X-Fire. Might as well look at the X-Boil while you're there. Save on shipping. Might as well get them both because they're not expensive. Not not they're prohibitively expensive anyway let's put it that way. Choose your size get get exactly what you want. Take another look at the video that I made on the X-Boil if you want to get a little bit of detail before going to Lille's website. Specifications for the stove all in the video description. If you have comments or questions on the X-Fire or anything else for that matter put them in the comments section below. But until next time get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Dirty hands say goodbye.